Alpina B5 Touring 2017 Review BMW isn't making an M5 Touring so it has been left to Alpina to produce a rival to AMG Z63 Estate. This 600 bhp B5 Touring is the result. What is it? The way Alpina goes about introducing new product to the press provides a first-class metaphor for its cars. Whereas BMW or any other car maker might launch a model over weeks or months to many hundreds of journalists and associated hangers-on, the launch of the new B5 saloon and estate was attended by 12 hacks, lasted one day and was twinned with the launch of the B3S and B4S models, of which more next week. Our host was Alpina boss Andy Bavens Yepen, who didn't just fly in, make a statement and bugger off again. No, he hung around for the duration, driving cars, checking tire pressures and directing events. The last thing he did was give me his mobile number just in case I had any outstanding questions. During presentations and conversations, talk was of cautious component choice, modest styling enhancement and development taking place almost entirely on the road and only at the Nürburgring and other tracks for extreme tire testing high-speed sign-off and other requirements that can't legally be satisfied on the street. And if you wanted one reason to explain why Alpinas feel the way they do, and why that feel is so utterly different from that of any other BMW, be it an in-car or not, it is this understated approach that provides it. The B5 in general and the B5 Touring in particular are exemplars of the philosophy. Trademark 20 spoke alloy wheels aside, they seem so subtle and the polar opposite of the look at me approach preferred by BMW's M Division customers. But the numbers speak for themselves, 600 bhp, 589 pounds foot and 202 miles per hour flat out. And that's just the estate. Of course, and where though it seems to write it, the B5 is not the only 600 bhp estate car out there, Audi and Mercedes have them, too. But it is the only BMW, Munich having again decided that non-existent US sales for cars in this format make its development pointless. But Alpina makes fewer than one car for every 1000 built by BMW, so this always has been and remains an opportunity. Indeed, Bob Ants Yepen says most B5s sold will carry touring bodywork. The start point, clearly, is BMW's superb new 5 Series but powered by the 4.4-liter twin-turbo V8 currently found in its 750i big sister. The main focus of the modifications to it has been the fitment of bigger, twin-scroll turbos boosting at a muscular 1.4 bar. This is enough to raise power from a fairly lazy 444 bhp to a very active 600 bhp and torque from 479 pounds foot to 589 pounds foot. The ZF transmission gets strengthened gear clusters and additional cooling, plus quicker shifts and a larger torque converter. Alpina says it can swap a cog in 0.1 seconds, which is rapid by any standards in the world. The real attention, however, has gone into the suspension. Chassis development chief Andreas Vollmer talks of all the days, weeks and months he and his team spend not hurling themselves around racetracks but just driving, using the cars as customers would. And then they change everything. You'd expect new springs, dampers and roll bars for a car such as this, but the geometry is different, too, and none more so than at the front where there's an entire degree of negative camber that requires completely different wishbones in order to achieve it. At this stage, though, they're only getting into their stride. The car has BMW's four-wheel steering system, but specifically tuned by Alpina, and the software for the normal electric steering is completely rewritten. They even fit a different steering wheel because they don't like the squidgy rims found on BMW M cars any more than I do. Four-wheel drive is fitted here for the first time in seven generations of Alpina 5 Series, but Bavens Yepen rejects the suggestion that he had no choice in this. We could have had a rear-drive B5 and I'd have preferred it, but even I accept that with 589 pounds foot, the customer wants four-wheel drive, he says. So they fiddled with that, too.
2, and now the V5 sends more of its torque, up to 90%, to the rear wheels and does so more of the time. Interestingly, despite the all-wheel drive hardware adding 70 kg, the entire car is 30 kg lighter than the previous, rear-drive V5. And Alpina has broken with years of Michelin shod tradition and developed a new Pirelli tire to go with the car. What's it like? The irony is that although this car was principally developed on the road, it can only be driven on the track, for now. As I write, Alpina has just three production specification B5S and none is yet homologated for road use. So it is around the Bilsterberg test track, smack in the middle of Germany, that I make my acquaintance. And the fact that it doesn't just give up at the first corner is remarkable. This is a deliciously evil track, undulating, very fast and perfect for light, track-tuned cars laden with downforce, such as the Porsche 911 GT3 RS I drove there recently, and not at all for softly sprung 2150 kg estates. The engine sounds superb and completely natural, although a slightly embarrassed looking Bavens Yipen confesses it's the first Alpina to synthesize just a tiny bit of sound through the loudspeakers, and is completely simpatico with its new gear shift strategy. It feels properly rapid, as you might expect, but perhaps not quite as alarmingly so as the Mercedes AMG E63 estate, which has the same power, even more torque and a lot less weight. Where it breaks free of expectation is in the corners. Drive as fast as you can around a circuit as fiendish as this and, of course, it's going to torture its tires, understeer in the long turns and wobble a little over cambers and crests. But if you're conservative with entry speed, get the nose into the apex on the brakes and then power on, it transforms into this most deliciously neutral, adjustable plaything. And its brakes are incredible, Valmer proudly says his steel brakes offer better retardation and fade resistance than Audi's ceramics. All I can say is they didn't get stressed once in many, many laps. I wish I could tell you more about the B5's ride and refinement, I find it telling that in addition to BMW's usual Sport Plus setting, Alpina has added its own Comfort Plus mode but slaloming around the Bilsterberg playing with switches reveals very little. I'd be surprised if its ride was less than excellent, but we'll only know for sure when we drive it in the UK later in the year. Ford Shelby Mustang GT 350R 2017 Review Ford has tried to turn the Mustang into a track machine by putting it on a diet and giving it a new engine. Has it worked? What is it? To put it politely, the Ford Mustang GT isn't the first car you'd choose to develop into a stripped out, no compromise track machine. For one thing it's a sizable old bus, it's 30 centimeters longer than the Porsche 911, a rather more obvious candidate, and some 10 centimeters wider, and for another, it weighs the better part of 1,800 kilograms. There wasn't a great deal Ford Performance could do about the Mustang's size, but to give the Shelby GT350R a fighting chance on track, it ditched the rear seats, stereo, sat-nav and air conditioning, although the latter three items can be added back in optionally. The wheels are exotic carbon fiber items, too, saving 6 kilograms at each corner. The total weight loss over the 5.0 GT is 60 kg, which is useful if not exactly transformative. The entire chassis has been overhauled with upgraded components and a much more track-focused setup, while a comprehensive aerodynamic package promises much more downforce than the regular car. Most unusually, though, the warbling V8 engine that powers the conventional Mustang has been ditched for a higher revving 5.2-liter flat-plane crank V8. That's something of a departure for an American muscle car, flat-plane cranks and higher revving V8s have been the preserve of European sports cars until now. The new motor revs beyond 8,000 revolutions per minute, whereas the outgoing cross-plane V8 doesn't reach far beyond 6,500 revolutions per minute. 
The power and torque figures hint at a Rev V8 rather than a lazy, torque rich bruiser. 2, 526 bhp at 7,500 revolutions per minute and 429 pounds foot at 4,750 revolutions per minute are not typical Mustang numbers. The soundtrack isn't typical Mustang either, the rumbling score replaced by highly strung snarls and barks. What's it like? As the most extreme Mustang to date, the GT350R goes to lengths not even the GT350 model would have considered in the pursuit of racetrack performance. In fact, Ford says it didn't even concern itself with trying to make the GT350R work on the public road. The standard car's plush leather chairs have been swapped out for heavily bolstered regress, while the steering wheel is wrapped in Alcantara. The sports seats are actually set an inch or two lower than the standard items, and with the steering column at full extension, the seating position is just about perfect. If Ford wants the GT350R to be assessed as a track car, there are few better places to do just that than Thruxton. The UK's fastest race track is a stern test of car and driver, mixing ballsy high-speed sequences with tight and technical sections. The GT350R is more than up to it. Whereas the Mustang GT feels about as adept on circuit as a canal boat would, this stripped-out model feels right at home. That much more aggressive suspension setup takes away all of the wallow and floatiness of the standard car, replacing it with agility control and precision. There are sections of Thruxton that demand so many different things from a car all at once, the start of the lap, for instance, combines a fast left-hand bend with a sharp crest and a heavy braking zone. Many cars would be completely flummoxed by that sequence, but the GT350R swallows it up without any trouble whatsoever. The steering is ultra-sharp and direct. The big Brembo brakes are excellent and the fat Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires generate enormous grip and traction. In the high-speed sections, such as the intimidatingly fast church corner, the car is incredibly stable, thanks in part to the aero package. There's so little body roll or dive under braking that you quickly forget just how big and, let's be honest, heavy the GT350R is. Chasing an 8,000 revolutions per minute redline in a Mustang is a novel experience. The Zingy V8 is right at the heart of the driving experience and it flings the car along at a mighty rate. It's also so much more responsive than the GT's cross-plane V8, it takes only a quick stab of the accelerator to bring the revs up during a downshift, whereas you really have to get into the GT's throttle pedal to awaken the engine, the engine.